Welcome to this service for the third Sunday of Epiphany. This, re this week, our readings reflect on two very different weddings and how we are called into a loving relationship with Jesus. I'm joined in church today by Catherine Froggart and by Reverend Claire, who is filming. This week on our YouTube channel, you can find Led by a Star. It's a selection of hymns for the season of Epiphany. It's been organized by our team of musicians who regularly provide hymns for our online services. And while we may not be able to gather and sing in church, you can sing and praise God wherever you are. Other ways of passing the time this week and staying connected with our church family, we can use the illustrated ministry packs which are on our website and also our parish news. This week, Tony has compiled an I Spy during lockdown where you can go throughout our parish and try to answer some of his rather complicated questions. I intend to do so when the weather gets a little better. So now, let us prepare our hearts to worship God, to enter the glorious presence of God. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognize God's presence here with us now. As God's people, we have gathered let us worship God now together, across the miles yet joined. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the light of Jesus, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. Father, we have sinned against heaven and, and against, against you. We are not, not worthy to be, to be called, called your children. children. We, we turn, turn to you again. again. Have, have mercy on us. Bring, bring us back, back to yourself as, as those who were once dead. dead but now, now have, have life through Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Father forgive you by the death of the Son and strengthen you in the power of the Spirit all of your days. Amen. Amen. The Collect for the Third Sunday of Epiphany. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence, renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Catherine will now read our first reading from Revelation. First reading is from Revelation chapter 19, verses 6 to 10. I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the sound of many waters and like the sound of mighty thunder peals, crying out, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. To her it has been granted to be clothed with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are true words of God. 
Then I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your comrades who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Our first hymn today is, O Worship the Lord in the Beauty of Holiness. Our Gospel reading today tells the story of Jesus turning water into wine at a wedding in Cana. For a change today, I'm not going to read the Gospel. Instead, we're going to hear and see it in the form of a doodle retelling. So now, hear and see the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Two days later, there was a wedding in the town of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. Jesus and his followers were also invited to the wedding. When all the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Jesus answered, Dear woman, why come to me? My time has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you to do. In that place there were six stone water jars. The Jews used jars like these in their washing ceremony. Each jar held about twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to the servants, 
fill the jars with water. So they filled the jars to the top. Then he said to them, Now take some out and give it to the master of the feast. So the servants took the water to the master. When he tasted it, the water had become wine. He did not know where the wine came from, but the servants who brought the water knew. The master of the wedding called the bridegroom and said to him, People always serve the best wine first. Later, after the guests have been drinking a lot, they serve the cheaper wine, but you have saved the best wine till now. So in Cana of Galilee, Jesus did his first miracle. There he showed his glory and his followers believed in him. We're still in Epiphany, a season in the church year when we see and hear revelations, epiphanies of Jesus as God. Listen to the last line of our gospel story. Jesus turned water into wine, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Prompted by his mother, Jesus performed a miracle at a wedding, thereby revealing his glory, his power to change nature. And that made some people believe in him, to see Jesus for who he is, Jesus as God Almighty. Throughout the Old and New Testaments, God's love God's relationship to God's people is often described in terms of a wedding, a marriage, a covenant, a promise between God and us. Both of our readings today feature weddings. Catherine read from the book of Revelation, John's epiphany, John's revelation from Jesus Christ. John hears what sounded like a great multitude crying out. Hallelujah, for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. To her it has been granted to be clothed with fine linen, bright and pure. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. This is a divine wedding of splendor and beauty and power. Now compare it to the wedding feast in Cana from our gospel reading, which is less perfect and more recognizable. We don't know much about the wedding. The couple isn't even named. All we know is that it took place in Cana and that Mary, Jesus, and his disciples were there. Unlike the glorious, perfect wedding in Revelation, in our gospel reading, something goes wrong. They run out of wine, a disaster which reflects poorly on the family's generosity and hospitality. Seemingly reluctantly, Jesus turns water into wine, and good wine at that. This is his first public miracle. I'm sure all of us have been to a wedding or some big occasion when something has gone wrong, a little off script. I can think of no other event in a person's life apart from maybe the inauguration of a new president of the United States and, may I add, the first woman, let alone black and South Asian woman, as vice president. That takes as much planning as a wedding. Most couples agonize over details. Guest lists, menus, dresses, suits, boutonnieres, flowers, photographers, themes, weather reports, and so on. But inevitably, something doesn't go to plan or the unexpected arises. Just look at this week, at Wednesday's near-perfect 
COVID-restricted, socially distanced presidential inauguration, which went so smoothly, so ahead of schedule, that Biden took his oath of office at 11.48 a.m., 12 minutes before noon, the official time when the transfer of power is transferred from one president to another. During the ceremony, there was a few minutes pause while commentators and constitutional experts reminded the gathered crowd full of former presidents of the correct and proper procedure. Biden was not officially the president of the United States of America until the clock struck 12. A small glitch, taken lightly and with good humor, but one that didn't detract from Biden and Harris making history, perfectly imperfectly. Maybe you've been to a wedding where the flower girl was too overwhelmed to make it down the aisle, or the ring bearer ran full tilt, full speed, crashing into people, or the best man forgot the ring, or the bride was late, or in the case of the second wedding I ever officiated, the groom was feeling the sore after effects of his bachelor party, where he drank too much wine and not enough water. I always tell couples that no wedding is ever perfect. No marriage is ever perfect. No relationship, no love, apart from God's love, can be perfect. The Christian life, who we are as Christians, is first and foremost a relationship with Jesus. And this relationship is, in, is reflected in both of our wedding-themed readings. It's a mixture of glorious splendor and everyday imperfections and complications. Wherever love is, God is. And at the beginning of most wedding ceremonies in the liturgy, we remind the couple and those gathered a verse of scripture, which tells us that God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. Whether we're ready or not, whether we're too early or too late, whether we've run out of wine, in plenty and in need, when we shout hallelujah, or when our barrels have run dry and our glasses are empty. Jesus wants to fill us with overflowing, lavishly abundant love. And he does so in relationship with us. We can experience this love in relationship with Jesus. One of my favorite theologians, who you've heard me quote from many times, Rachel Held Evans, describes marriage as a relationship, a relationship that is made holy when it reflects the life-giving, self-sacrificing love of Jesus. She goes on to say that all relationships, whether marriage, friendship, singleness, Parenthood, partnership, adoption, ministry, neighborhoods, families, and churches, all relationships give Christians the opportunity to reflect the grace and peace of the kingdom of God, however clumsily and imperfectly. Held Evan reminds us that a marriage is a relationship, and all relationships have the potential whether perfect or not, to reflect, to reveal God's love. And that is our greatest epiphany. Jesus transforms the ordinary into the extraordinary, whether water into wine or each and every one of us. Jesus was present at the wedding when the cups were empty 
and when the cups were full. Jesus loves us just as much when everything goes right and to plan as he does when everything goes wrong and we make some little fumbles. Jesus makes the ordinary glorious and the glorious ordinary. Jesus' miracle, Jesus' wine, was and is the same for all of us. Jesus invites us into his great feast of love, a relationship where we can hear and see and even taste the abundant, transformative, miraculous love of God. Amen. We now have our second hymn, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise. So now we affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though, Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Catherine will now lead us in our prayers of intercession. For the intercessions this week, I will draw on prayers from the Iona community. Over time, over space, over matter and thought, you are our God in all and through all. The noises of war are loud in your ears, as is the cry of a newborn child. You share the excitement of those pioneering research 
as well as the last breaths of those nearing death. And in Christ, all the pain and potential in the world are held together in the hope of healing. Be present to us here, gracious God, and let your spirit open us to glimpse that fairer world which you intend for us and for all people. So hear us wherever we are as we pray. So for our church, may we here in Scotforth and Hala become a centre of faith, hospitality and imagination. We pray for Rebecca and Claire and all who contribute to the delivery and leading of services and the provision of pastoral care. We pray for our mission partners, Stephen and Marit Impey, working for Wycliffe Bible Translators and their work in Ethiopia. We pray for the ongoing work of Global Link with refugees and asylum seekers in Lancaster and for Mind Lancashire, supporting people struggling with their mental health. Give them all the resources, strength and creativity they need in their ministries. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Surrounded by both rugged and tender beauty, we pray for the earth, especially where it's damaged by human carelessness and threatened by human greed, and ask that we may learn to care for the earth as you do. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Living in times of uncertainty and lockdown, we pray for trust in you. We thank you for scientific advances that lead to vaccine development, for collaboration that leads to vaccine delivery and rollout. And yet we ask, may the provision of care and treatment be provided in a just and fair way here in the UK and globally. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Conscious of our interconnectedness in society, we pray for those who are giving of themselves as they support and care us, for us. For people working and volunteering in health and social care, in education, in public services, in retail, in third sector organisations. Give them strength, rest and provision for their needs. From our parish prayer diary, we remember the residents of Chelmsford Close, Colchester Avenue, Winchester Avenue and the Potteries. And from our church prayer diary, we remember the members of the knitting group. Be present to all who live in these roads and participate in the knitting group. Be a rock and a presence in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Grateful for the life in our bodies, we pray for those whose lives are diminished by COVID-19, by ill health, depression, grief or rejection. And we ask for the healing, the affirming and the listening which will encourage and restore them. We bring before you today the following people who have asked for prayers for healing. Alan Cathan family, Mary Wilson, Eunice Parkinson, Marion Corkhill, Catherine McHale, Pat Mitchell, John Fiddler, Sarah Huddleston, and anyone else known to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God in Jesus, you experience the pain of separation and death. And we remember today Betty Hartley, Jeff Harker, Valerie Barnish, and anyone else known to us who has died. Be present and close to their family and friends. And we also remember all those who have died due to the coronavirus and the family and friends of them who mourn their loss. Be a light in their darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Merciful Father, 
Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so now we pray the prayer our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Faithful God, may we who have shared in this time of worship Glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love, and as you have fed us with your presence, so make us one in heart and mind, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ, the Son of God, Perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Thank you for joining with us today in our act of worship. We look forward to worshiping with you as we continue in this season of Epiphany. God bless.